Hi, I'm Sarah O'Connell. Hi, I'm Julia Scotty. Hi, my name's Rebecca Root. Hi, I'm Fox Fisher. Hi, I'm Shady Moore. Hi, I'm Annie Wallace. Hey, I'm Romario Wanless, aka Mr. Black Branson. Hello, every blooming body. Jordan Gray, tall, dark friend here. Hi, I'm Scott Turner Schofield. Hi. I'm Stephanie Hurst. Hi, I'm Lewis Hancock. Hi, I'm Alexandra Gray. Hi, my name's uh, Jake Groff. Hi, I'm Kate O'Donnell. And welcome to The Sarah O'Connell Show. Welcome to The Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to The Sarah O'Connell Show. 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 And you're watching The Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to The Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to The... Sarah O'Connell Share. She's dead good like. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. This is the Sarah O'Connell Show. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Hi everyone. In the first episode, I asked some of my friends what their coming out experiences were like and also shared my own. In this episode, I'll be asking what advice would you give to someone that hasn't come out yet but would like to. Now, of course, you don't have to come out at all. It's entirely up to you, whatever feels right for you in your transition. But here's some advice that I found useful. For me, it's important to emphasise that I'm still the same person. I've always been just a lot, lot happier. Uh, also, let people know which name you'd like to be called and your preferred pronouns. Another tip is to simply ask people to change your name on their phones. It's a super easy way for them to get used to it. I now open up the question to my friends and ask, what advice would you give to anybody that hasn't come out yet but would like to? Wow, that's a hard question. You know, I, I, there's a quote by Anna East Nin, um, and, I, and it became, and I'm paraphrasing, but there came a time when the risk to remain tight in the bud became more painful than to, to blossom. I think, I think your truth your personal truth will lead you to a point where you'll know when it's the right time to come out. And if you, um, and, and sometimes you just need to make that first stride and that first announcement to somebody. That's why I had the A and B list. Right. Just, you know, um, to see, to test the waters. If you're not ready to come out, then you shouldn't. It's, uh, and nobody should force you ever to do that. I don't, my personal opinion. I would say, um, don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, don't be afraid to, even just to say to a friend, um, can I talk to you about something? Or, you know, uh, and, and if you don't feel like your friends would accept you, I mean, you'd actually be surprised. I know a lot of trans people who have spoken to somebody um, a colleague or a friend, um, and of course this does work both ways, but you know, on one hand, they're surprised positively by somebody that they thought might turn against them has actually said, oh, brilliant, well done, good for you, and some of the people that they thought might have been accepting of them then to turn around and say, oh, I don't think I want to know you anymore, which is a shame. Um, but never, to, you know, don't be afraid of asking for help. You know, I think that's one of the things that a lot of people do resist because they feel that they're going to be, I mean, whatever, so not not just be coming out as a trans person, but anything, you've got a problem. You know, people don't often feel that they can talk about that because they feel that they're going to be a burden on somebody. They feel that they're going to take up too much of their time and everybody's so busy these days. When actually you'd be surprised, a lot of people will say, talk to me, tell me what's on your mind, you know. Um, and um, and those people are often sometimes in, in in places of your life where you least expect them. I, I guess people are still uh, wanting to come out and are still afraid to come out. I get I get people's um, I get comments from people all the time, as you must do as well, Sarah, on on every single social media network. And people are, are of course at, at different stages in in their transition. And I think. For me, I mean, the biggest difficulty was my own prejudice about trans issues and about admitting that I was trans. And I had so much shame about the whole thing. And I thought, my God, it's going to just disrupt my whole world. And, you know, and, and it ultimately is the only path I could have taken, actually. Um, and I think for a lot of these people that are, are, are commenting or kind of messaging me about what should I do, they're at the same point as that I was at. And they kind of do have to take that leap and, you know, we know that the system, you know, the system, the medical system does take a long time, a lot longer than you'd ever want. 
so I think if, if anyone is in any doubt at all about their, their gender, I would say go see your GP, ask to be referred to a gender specialist and get on that path because even if it turns out they don't want medical support um, or, or maybe they don't even want to socially transition, but they do have to go down that path just to kind of check and see whether that's going to work for them. And I think that, and I guess life's about that anyway, where we have to try on different hats and work out what, what defines us exactly. And I think it's the same with transition. You kind of have to uh, try what doesn't work first and be like, oh, that doesn't work. I didn't really enjoy it. Like for me, I didn't really enjoy wearing that, you know, sparkly dress or the, you know, the waistcoat or, you know, you know some stuff's really obvious, isn't it? And other things, um, you know, are slightly different. And you don't really know how you're going to feel until you say, look, could you refer to me by this new name? Could you uh, use uh, male pronouns for me and, and just see how that feels? And then, you know, it's, it's baby steps, isn't it? And we don't just take one giant leap. It's just, it's just like heading, a path heading, hopefully, in the right direction. My advice would be to, first and foremost, accept yourself. We have to accept ourselves um, and embrace ourselves before we can move forward and allow anyone else to embrace us. So that would be my advice, to, to work on accepting yourself first and foremost, yeah. and then everything else will be okay. Any advice? Um, well, as I say, everyone's situation is different. The only advice I would give is do what's right for you. Don't feel pressured that just because I've come out, you have to. Don't feel that because it's on television a lot that you have to. If it's right for you, and if the time is right for you, then do it. And I do think that you'll feel better for it in the long run. I do. I do now. But the time had to be right for me. Never bunch trans people up as a complete collective. We're all individuals, and everyone's mileage is different. People have to come out or not at the times that are right for them. And that's the important thing, making everybody's experience individual. Don't. <laughs> I would say, you know, this is, this, is, this is my opinion. I would say, listen, unless you got your shit together and you know what you want in life, there is no need to do the whole coming out process thing. There's absolutely no need. You just need to live. Like no one needs to know who you want to be with stuff like that. I think, I think that sort of pressure only comes from. It's not necessarily wanting to announce your sexuality or gender. It comes from not being able to partake, participate in general conversation. So, for example, going oh, as a, as a woman, for example, said I was a lesbian and I wanted to come out. I don't want to come out because I want to feel free to say oh, I like that girl over there. You probably should try. So just say. Hey, I like that girl over there. And you might find people might be like, oh, you lesbian. I like girls. And you might find they actually don't get, they don't give a crap about it. So it, I think the pressure, I think the whole coming out thing is mainly about wanting to participate and feel a part of a wider conversation of, you know, being by the pub or the club and wanting to take part in the court and stuff like that. That's what, that's what I would say. If you live at home with your mom and your parents, just, just forget about it. No, not right now. <laughs> Wait, if you got a little pun, but let's say you do want to come out. Okay, argument's sake, you do desperately want to do it. You know, start with your friends. Make sure you have a little support group going with your friends. Tell them first. And you work your way up to like a great, great, great grandma somewhere. It's <laughs> more than likely going to be on your side. And then eventually you can lead up to the parents, you know, and, and I would say that would be the one of the best process to do it, I would say. If you still want to do it. <laughs> no one is inherently bad. Like people just make silly decisions. People might have learned the wrong terms. They might be afeared and afraid of this sort of thing. Um, be confident because that stops people in their tracks. Be proud and be patient, patient, proud, patient. And what was the other one? Just be yourself. If you haven't come out yet and you want to, because it's okay if you don't, everybody would understand at this moment if you don't. You know, not being out as trans is very different than not being out as gay or lesbian or bisexual. Um, it's about 
a personal authenticity that has everything to do with your body and your ability to move through the world uh, in a way that's very different uh, for gays and lesbians. So you're right to take your time to think about this. You're right to take your time to find a way that works for you. And if anyone tells you that you're not doing it right, you send them to me, okay? To me, YouTube videos were vitally important because if you're sitting there and you're watching this now, you've got your laptop in front of you or you're watching it, wherever you are on your tablet, on your phone, and you're thinking there's no way out and you couldn't possibly have a transition. Look, there's two people here that have done it and there's millions around us that have. Never ever have suicide on the cards. You will always be your true self. You will. It's absolutely achievable and you can do it. And you won't lose everything. Never think that you'll lose everything. Um, but, you know, you're not alone no. and things will get better. Absolutely. And while it's scary before, it's kind of oh, be amazing put, on the other honestly, side. Yeah, it's literally, if you, if you think of something like when you start thinking about it it's like that and yeah. then it grows to this and it grows mm -hmm. to that and grows to that and it, it, <clears throat> it consumes you in the end and that's what happened with me you know yeah. you just it consumes you every waking moment and it will not go away and the minute you say those words I'm transgender it's gone yeah it really it's is it's gone it's the most empowering it just goes amazing, and, yeah. so, and then you transition yeah <sighs> it's just not there anymore yeah it's so, I mean, I can feel myself welling up now because it's just not there. And it been there all my life, and then for it not to be there, sometimes, I don't know whether you think this, do you think that it's going to come back and haunt you? No, but what I do do is not take any day for granted. Oh, I, I never, do, I never do. appreciate yeah. oh, just gosh, yeah. wherever I am, if I'm shopping, yeah. if I'm at a theatre, or just walking mm. through London, I'm like, I'm doing it as me. Exactly, yeah. But I always was me, but... People can see on the outside who I've always yeah, been on the inside yeah. and it just makes all the difference. I just feel world. like I've won the lottery every single day. Exactly. And I just think, I think because it was there all my life, yeah. you just think it could come back, but it can't come back. Yeah. It's not possible to come you, back. You can't go back to something you won. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, no, very lucky. Exactly. Very lucky. Yeah. Okay, so my advice for coming out would be to, okay, I, I think the best way to do it personally is to you know sit down with your family with your close close friends and have just an honest discussion about it and kind of be prepared for people not quite understanding and having lots of questions and people might react a bit negatively but i think the worst thing you could do probably is to like get really defensive and like sort of you know it turn it into an argument because the other people are just trying to understand and i think if you can sit down, have a have just a genuine discussion and tell people how you genuinely feel and it'd be more of like I I, I guess with my mum I turned it into more of a discussion rather than just saying, Mum, this is who I am and this is what I'm doing, whether you like it or not. I, yeah. I, I sat down and I chatted to how, how I felt and I said what my options were and I showed her videos of all the people that transitioned and I think that's something really important actually because I think that most people that react negatively are just really worried that you're setting yourself up for a really bad life, that your life's going to be really hard, that it's really, you're going to turn into, you know, I don't know, a monster or something, you know. And I think just by being able to show people, trans people, that are just so happy and content, you know, um, that are just a really positive story, that you can be trans and have a perfectly positive, happy life and, and achieve everything you want to and that it's going to actually improve your life you know by times a million you know and, and, and not hinder it yeah. just showing them stuff like that positive things I think really puts people's minds at ease um so that that's my that's my advice just kind of you know just speak from the heart and just just have a really honest discussion and if you know what if anybody does take it negatively I guess it's really hard to accept that but you just have to do it for you. And what I would say is that I think in most cases, I'd like to think that when those people see you transitioning and see you actually getting happier and sort of, you know, be more comfortable in your own skin and seeing that it built, they will see that it's right for you then and, and their minds will be changed, but just over time. Make sure that you are prepared for 
whatever comes with that transition. Because, and, and I, I'll never sugarcoat anything for anyone. Being transgender isn't a fairy tale. It's not like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna transition and then life is gonna be so glitz and glamoury. It, it, that's not what it's like at all. Um, you know, I've had times when I first transitioned where I was like, shit, I could have just stayed the way that I was because this is, is a lot more challenging. That's what I thought. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I was much more happier with myself. I loved who I was and I didn't love who I was before. And that's the thing that, you know, people have to understand, like, you're going to meet, be met with a lot of hardships and a lot of tough things that are going to come with your transition. But um, the reward for your happiness and being who you are, at the end of the day, when you go to sleep, you're going to love that, that that's going to be what's most important to you, that you're going to love the body that you're in, you're going to love who you are. But there are some risks in terms of, of relationships, dating, family. Um, so, and, and for some, for some trans people that doesn't happen. Some of them have very supportive friends, family, um, everyone's story is different, but just be prepared for which, whichever decision you ever, and that goes to say with anything, if you want to change cities, you want to change jobs, be prepared and uh, make sure you're strong enough to, to deal with whatever you're faced when you're making a, a transition or a change and you're going to be fine. And you're, and you're when, and once the more you grow into it, the more you research and uh, learn about it, you're going to love, you're going to love yourself. And that's all that's going to matter. So the advice I give to someone who hasn't come out yet, um, but wants to, I would say, um, make sure firstly that what you're doing is safe. You know, I wouldn't advise anyone to, to just sort of bite the bullet and come out and, you know, tell your friends and tell your family because I don't know your situation and I don't know where you're based and I don't know what the climate is like for trans people where, where, you, where you're from, obviously. Um, you know, I, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't come out earlier, but then, um, obviously I was living in London and, and I think it was a very different, um, a different climate to probably where a lot of people live and, and the reaction that, that a lot of people might get, um, you know, I think just, I mean, there are lots of, there are lots of, um, ways that you can find other trans people. There are groups, there are lots of online groups, even on Facebook, you know, there are loads of FTM and MTF groups and support groups and, um, you know, trans networking and so on. So, you know, I think find other people that um, will understand you and will accept you and will give you advice. Um, and also will provide a support system if things do go wrong with your family. Um, I think, you know, you know as well as I do that if, if you really know that you're trans and you really know that something's seriously wrong, you can't live like that forever. Um, because I think it's a, it's a life half lived and you'll always live with those what ifs and what could have been and what should have been. Um, but all I would say is just, you know, do it where at least you have some support, be that from family or friends or, or your partner, then, you know, just make sure that you've got someone who you know is going gonna, is gonna to be there for you. I would say now is probably the best time to come out. We're living in, we're at Trans Pride today and it's amazing. We marched through the town, cars were beeping. There's so much more visibility with things like Caitlyn Jenner and, and stuff that's going on legally for protection. So we're very protected and, and we have rights and we have support groups and there are lots of support groups here. And also the gender spectrum is really broad now. So I, I think find where you are on that spectrum and start to explore it with people you trust, people you feel comfortable with. Tell somebody, don't be on your own. I think I think a lot of um, people committing su trying to you know attempted suicides or depression and stuff is linked into isolation. So I think try and not be isolated with it. Get on some forums, tell your best friend, uh, tell people who love you, who care about you, and get them get their, get their support. But ultimately, you're going to do it. You're going to transition, so it's just a matter of when. I transition. I couldn't decide a date to transition, so I decided the beginning of the financial year. I literally decided the beginning of the financial year. Well, yeah, I couldn't decide on a date, so that's how I did it. And I flitted between living as a man, living as a woman. It's a process. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. I, I think my advice is it's a process. Be prepared for that process. It can take years, and it should take years. I think you don't do it overnight. It's not like buying a new car. You know, in fact, it's nothing like buying a new car. No. I bought my car off eBay. It's 
350 quid. It's nothing like Although buying a car. It's transport. Oh! <laughs> but I'm dumb. Oh, no. That wraps it up for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and to everybody that contributed their stories. Please be sure to subscribe to The Sarah O'Connell Show. Leave a huge thumbs up. Leave any comments, ask questions and be sure to share it. And stay tuned for the next episode of The Sarah O'Connell Show coming soon.